JD and I went and had a beer after yesterday's show, watched the end of the Giants game, and they ran out of players, and they ended up losing their seventh in a row. Here's a question I have sure. for you about just about the Giants. Did, does it matter if they win 73 games versus, say, 81 games? Because for the last couple months, it looked like, oh, you know what, this team might not make the playoffs, but they're going to win 81 or 82 games, and they're going to be five or six games short. Is there a price to pay for them not even being a 500 team? Beca- or, yeah. or for them going into a complete free fall, let's say, if this continues along the lines of the last week over the course of the next month? You know, J.D., you were the originator of this phrase, and I have come to respect it, and it is, it matters how things end. It matters how things end. So, yes, if the Giants finish 80 and 82, that is significantly different than 72 and 90. 72 and 90 is we are a ways from being... Where we want to be. Is there any chance there'd be a, a reevaluation of Gabe Kapler's? I'd be, I'd be surprised, but. Tenure? You know why? Because next year's not the year anyway now. You know what I'm saying? Well, how are what you do gonna, you mean next year's not the year? Well, because. They got to win next year. Well, I know they. But how, okay, how are you going to go? How are you going to go from 72 wins to 90 wins? You know what I'm saying? Because I think. From 107. Look, we knew it wasn't going to be 107, but we thought this team was half decent. We th- I thought they would be in the race. But yes, I if if they go 72 and 90, I don't know. Do you think do you think there's a reassessment? I I actually don't. I think he'll I think Gabe Kapler's going to manage the Giants next year. I think in all likelihood that was solidified when he won the manager of the year last year and got a contract extension. I forgot about that. Yeah. Good good break for him on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but no, I, I mean I just keep looking at, at, at where the Giants are overall, and it's now twenty four and forty one since Father's Day. If that twenty four and forty one turns into thirty and sixty, I mean Well, here's one thing that I think matters, and I'm sorry. You finish behind the Diamondbacks? I mean, you then a facts are fact, you're fourth in the division. Fourth. We can live with third because of the Padres and the Dodgers. And you brought this up about the Diamondbacks uh, yesterday that, you know, they they started a rebuild a couple years ago and they still got a ways to go, but they feel pretty good about moving forward. Right, they feel and they've like already the, leapfrogged the Giants. They feel like they're who haven't even started trending upward. Right, and right now I think if you look at the Giants, we don't know what they're how they're trending. They going to go up? They going to go down? I guess they're so far down right now that you'd think that they would have to go up or couldn't help but not go up in 2023. I mean, it, it's fascinating when you, when you really think of. I never would have believed it would have got this bad, as bad as it is now. But the truth is, in the next month, it could get worse. It could. And it almost feels like it may. It feels like it's more likely to get worse than better right now. Because they, they A, they don't have the horses. And you could just, you know, Logan Webb yesterday after the game used the words complacency, lack of fire. And he's what, 22 years old? He's older than that. 23? Yeah, he's a little older. Okay. I think he's a little older than that. Okay. I'd have, I'd have to find Because him. I think... Uh, Anyway, my point is, is that's a young player on the team. He's 25. Okay. Be 26 in November. So he's... I got it mixed up with uh, Jordan Poole. Um, but anyway, he, used, he was using the words complacency, lack of fire. Um, let me ask you this. How different in personnel is this year's team with last year's team? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, you think this team's... I mean... Let's use the actual numbers. Well, they're not as good. Well, obviously. I know they're not as good, but I'm talking about how much did they really change personnel wise last year? To yeah, this? They, they went they lost Re- Posey. They went. Re- they lost Posey. They went Radon instead of Gosman. Okay. They kept Iskafani. That was a disaster because right. he's given them nothing. Alex Wood, solid. I mean, Logan Webb isn't as good as he was last year too. I mean, that's right. That's another part, but that's not a personnel change per se. I mean, Belt's still around. That's kind of what I mean. I mean, w- my point is. They're not Longoria? drastically different than last year. No, they're drastically. Just, they're just not getting the production that they got exactly. from random players. Exactly. 
So yeah, Lamont Wade Jr. was a superhero last year. Exactly. And this year he's just a 4A guy that's been hurt a lot. So, I, I see, this is why I do think this matters where they finish. You're telling me, and I, I get it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify it a little bit here. You're telling me with kind of the exact same team, or pretty close to the exact same team, one year you went on 107, 175? How, like, how does that happen? Well, that's the part that doesn't How does that up. happen? I, I mean, I get 107 to, hell, 82. But how do you go from 107 wins to losing more than 30 games that you did the prior year? Like, that, that's what I don't get. No, and that's, that's a real, I mean... It's almost like Farhan made a deal with the devil, and the devil said, look, you know how you like to play in platoon? One year we're going to give you, you're going to get everything right. We're going to give you everything right. Right. And the next year you ain't getting nothing because it's always it always ends even, Steven. And I think that's the where the frustration comes from the fan base in this, Steiny, is that everybody kind of knew that they they hit above their weight last year, right? Mm-hmm. And they won 107 games, and everybody knew it. And I think the fan base, the thought at that point is, okay, now make the moves that solidify that. And not that you're going to be 107, but you really are closer to 75 or 80 than, than you know, I always said, well, they weren't a 107-win team, but they were probably a 95-win team. Well, the right. reality is maybe they were really an 87 or an 88-win team. Right. And so, in essence, what the fan base wanted this offseason was treat yourself as if you're a team that's going to win in the 80s and go get, you know, what you have is nice, but go get some everyday players to throw into that mix to where, you are held up if some of these platoons right. and other things don't work out. And they just didn't do it. And now they are getting the worst case scenario in a way from the hodgepodge of players that they have. And Gabe Kapler, is it all his fault? No. But it just like the moment they start losing the is the moment that he becomes just a guy that you never want to hear talk or read a quote from. Like, it it just... <laughs> no, and, I hear you. And that was always part of it for me with Gabe was just the notion that if this team doesn't win, can he hold Can he hold them up? Can, does he have anything in the bag to keep... And, and the reality is, like, when the plan goes right, sure, he can, in hindsight, go back and explain their process and how everything worked. But when things don't go right, does he have anything at all in the bag to right. hold it together? And the answer is no. And the answer was no in Philadelphia. Yeah, I, I, it's, hard to, it's, hard to, uh, it's hard to disagree with that. Uh, Steiny, why don't you just say it? The Giants stink. Uh, you know what? You know what, halftime, Jay? I'll do it. Hey, JD, Giants stink. They stink. They do. But I just don't understand how they go from 107 wins to this. To this, I, I do. Like, here's the thing where I'd like to think that I, I'm not unfair. If you watched all the last year's games, you knew there was going to be not only a drop off in the in the number of wins, but you knew they just weren't going to be as dynamic late in games. They, they, I mean, they weren't going to be as clutch. But it does feel like they just all like they they. All their guys that played well last year aren't playing well this year. Not nearly uh, to the level that they played last year. Well, the question becomes, how do you fix it? I know, and, 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 and there's a pressure now yes. to fix it. And I think the star power is what the fans want. And I think that's what we've talked a lot about sure. on this station is you need to go get stars. And I, and I do think there's a portion of the fan base that would, you know what? Even if they aren't a playoff team next year, just get me a couple of stars. Give me some eye candy. Exactly. Give me, give me some players that I can root for and buy their jersey and know they're going to be here for the next five to ten years. Whatever. I would bet, though, that that's not the, the route that Farhan Zaidi goes. And it won't be the path that he's gone down these last couple of years, but it'll be more similar to that path than the path of go and sign two star players, maybe a pitcher and a and a hitter or a couple of hitters. Like I just don't think that it to me it's not gonna be Aaron Judge and another guy. I, I just but I do think it will be younger, more athletic players that are maybe acquired in trade 
that are lesser known right. but wind up being good players. Not not the scrap heap 4A guys like the Lamont Wades, but, I mean, players that are a step away from being in the big leagues or already in the big leagues and had some success, but younger, more athletic, more dynamic. But, again, not necessarily the star power and the big names that the fan base is going to want. So I, I think that they're... I would have confidence in Farhan Zaidi that they're going to get better. Right. But I don't think they're going to get better in a way that's going to appease the fan base on a grand scale. So they're still going to have that same target on their back from the fans and from the media that they have this year. Why can't they sign a big guy? A big boy. At least in the recent past. I think Stanton and and, uh, Bryce Harper. I think part of it is they don't want to. I mean, I've always said this. I think part of it is they don't want to. They don't really want to. Because if you wanted to, you could be the high bidder. And this is where we're a little different, but I kind of think the same thing about the 49ers and Jimmy Garoppolo. They, they would have traded him, but they weren't going to do anybody any favors. 